It is time for ESPN Cricket Info Run Order. In the aftermath of what will be a series to remember forever. Not for Michael Hussey, but for everyone else on this panel. Aww. So, time to say hello to Akash Chopra, Nikhil Nas, Gaurav Sundararaman and Dustin Salgado. We've seen Richard Pant play a man of the match performance at the same time, almost at the receiving end of our praise and our abuse while he was getting there. And Rohit Sharma for the kind of uh, dismissals he tends to have. It makes for a point. Should we? Should, is it is it merited for a for attacking batsmen to be criticised when they get out playing the way we know them to play? Right. So Mike Hussey and Akash Chopra here. Let's go to Mike Hussey first up. Us. Oh, why do I have to open the batting? Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I, I think I think they do um, need to get criticised if they if they go out playing those attacking shots. I, I'm all for players playing their natural game, and that's fine. But if you want to play in that manner, and you want to be aggressive, and you want to take risks, and and uh, and play percentage that you know, percentage shots that maybe aren't in your favour. When it comes off, fantastic! You will get all the plaudits. If it doesn't go your way, you have to be prepared to cop a bit of criticism along the way. See, in the end, you have to score runs. Uh, so if you're just being defensive and not scoring runs, that's not going to help the team either. Uh, but uh, in, in modern day cricket, it happens a lot of times that uh, this is my way to bad uh, is a bit of a cop out as well in certain cases. It's not coming out of nowhere. It's the shot that I play, and uh, I've played it very well in the past. Uh, Sometimes you get out, sometimes it goes uh, over the ropes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, it was unfortunate uh, and and a very uh, sad dismissal to be honest uh, in the end. But again, like I said, uh, th- those are my shots and I'll keep playing them. There are circumstances. Uh, you've got to respect them, play according to them. Because if you're not doing them, uh, or rather if you're not respecting them, if you're not doing what you're expected to do, uh, then, then you're actually betraying the team. You're not playing for the team. Uh, you're playing for yourself because this is what you do best. Uh, but then, if it is reckless, uh, then it has to be uh, it has to be criticized. I think uh, the sh- the shot that caused a lot of debate was Rohit Sharma's in the first innings uh, because he was looking so good. He had already hit a boundary in the over, and then he played that shot, got out, and Sunil Gavaskar kind of commented saying this was a completely unnecessary shot. He used the word unnecessary. Uh, more times than were necessary, perhaps. Akash, so how does like an ordinary fan decide between if a shot is a, a good attacking shot or a reckless shot, as you say? How do you decide what's reckless? Okay, so uh, for example, just just read the situation, and this happens a lot in T20 cricket as well, uh, even though it goes unnoticed. Uh, will a six uh, change the complexion of the game? Uh, if you're going for that glory shot, you want to hit a six. Uh, will it actually have an impact on the on the just the flow of the game, the way the game is flowing? Uh, if the answer to that question is a no, then uh, uh, you got to now question the the short selection, and that's what short selection is all about, right? Well, what about what about Rohit's dismissal just before that house when he plays a pull shot? You say instinctively, right? And you play the pull shot. Oh, he's hit it so well, but he gets caught. Now is that reckless as well, or is just the lion one reckless where he's not got to the pitch and he's clearly gone for it and it looks terrible when it doesn't come off? No, I, I would say that uh, the, the hook and pull shot is a more instinctive shot. No, no, no question about that. And and sometimes it's hard to sort of put it away. The Robert Sharma dismissal, yeah, I, I I thought it was a bit of a disappointing dismissal at that stage because he was playing so well. Um, Yes, he plays that shot in the past, but he had a man pushed back there. So, Rohit Sharma needed to ask himself, well, if I do get this, it's going to go for six. But if I don't quite get it, I'm going to be in the in the pavilion. You've got to have your areas where you think you can be aggressive uh, off a particular ball. And maybe that's hitting straight down the ground. Maybe that's going over mid-off. Or maybe that's the slog sweep in where there's a gap. I, the basic element of sport is decision-making. Every second of the match, whatever sport you're playing, you're, you're deciding what to do. You could play an innocuous shot which doesn't look like an aggressive shot and yet criticise it. You know, so, so you've got to look at the situation at the time, whether it was needed at the time. I mean, how long before then a defensive batsman then comes in saying, listen, I know you need five runs and over or six runs and over, but this is how I play. So, let's just stick with it. You've got to question the decision. Uh, you could be the most most aggressive boxer, yet you need to know when is the time to defend and when is the time to attack. Yeah, I guess GS, in common cricketing folklore, you never criticise the defensive batsman for getting out playing a defensive shot. Even if it's a loose one, even if he gets out with the gap between bat and pad, no one goes gaga over it. When you see a wicket like Rohit Sharma's or like Pans, there's like all, you want to throw everything at them. So, we do criticise defensive batsmen for strikers. I think it's some, it's happened sometime recently. I don't remember when, but it happened recently. I think uh, somebody, somebody criticised Hanuma Vihari for his innings. <laughs> 
they are not the average fan either i'd like to point out yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is i think we're going to see more of this happen nowadays because it's not only rohit shot even the entire sri lankan team against england in the first innings they got out to reverse sweeps and the very aggressive shots uh, the fact is i guess that uh, 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 the game the patience game is uh, slowly fading away and we just have a few cricketers who actually play that game so everybody wants to hit that boundary even mayank agarwal in the first innings uh, it was a shot which was uh, technically not required so like uh, both akash and hasi are saying that it's um, a very very important to play the situation and uh, sehwag scored 8000 odd runs uh, with his natural game playing aggressively right it yeah. did work for him and we he we did criticize him uh, i think uh, in the mcg test while going for hitting a, a double hundred he got out uh trying to hit a stick so uh, i think uh, players will continue to do that uh, i don't think they they're patient anymore as they were before but uh, i think they just have to play the situation yeah it's a good point uh, I, i think um with t20 coming in what just over 10 years ago it certainly has changed the way we played the game you know the, the players are always looking to score runs they're looking to score quickly um there's not the focus on technique as much and and so we're sort of seeing that filter through the other other formats of the game as well even in test cricket mm. yes nikhil uh, there is oh, there is only one caveat actually in this uh, sorry sorry nikhil uh, yeah. that even when you were to score say a runner ball 100 in a, in a test match uh, your scoring shots are going to be about 25 or 30 not more than that or uh, your fours and singles and everything else you are your strike rate is yes run a ball 100 uh, but you still need need to find a way to defend those 70 balls uh, uh, so uh, there is a lot of merit in also working on your defensive techniques and in the end no matter how aggressive you are uh, whether virender sehwag was yes he was a very aggressive player and so was matthew hayden and and a lot many others uh, they did have a decent defensive game even a rohit sharma when he scores a double century for india uh, opening test cricket uh, opening in test cricket he ends up also defending a lot of balls so everybody needs to have that game uh, if they want to score a big uh, big century or or a big hundred so when aggressive players naturally aggressive players shot makers play this sort of shot is it about yes they deserve the criticism or is it now let's let them do their thing they'll figure it out uh, akash chopra conditions apply uh, of course uh, the circumstances will decide uh, whether you will be critical or you say it's all right because this is how he plays uh, he's already got a 100 team is in a, a very secure position uh, that's okay but uh, if the team is in a precarious situation you're well set and you let the team down uh, of course that should be criticized mike hasi yeah live by the sword die by the sword i think uh, you know you, you get the plaudits when uh, you, when it comes off and uh, you play the amazing innings but if the situation presents itself that uh, you know you don't need to play in that manner or you get out you know playing an irresponsible shot and you put the team in a precarious position then you unfortunately you're going to have to cop a bit of criticism nikhil naz well, i think you should follow the sachin tendulkar example one of the most aggressive batsmen that we've seen in international cricket but when it needed to be done not play a cover drive throughout the innings he did that so let everyone follow that. go on just don't be on social media oh very likely <laughs> <laughs> the average fan justin selgado Yeah, I think uh, if it's Rishabh Pant, then you shouldn't criticize him. But if it's Matthew Wade, then you can. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant! This <laughs> fun. Remember, <laughs> somewhere between Anuma Vihari and Rohit Sharma lies perfect intent, and that is probably Virat Kohli. On that note, thank you very much. <laughs>